on the website, resistrnc.org, uh, you have a photo of or, or a diagram of the parade route. And the parade route is in one color. The protest zone is in a different color. And the rest is white background. And on that email, on, on that website, you, sit, you wrote, the area shown in white is the area we will use. What do you mean by that? Um, the local government has chose to um, follow the, the federal government's um, ad agenda and controlling the people and to marginalize them. Uh, we, we don't want to engage uh, or basically we're saying that um, the people are free and if they want to walk uh, in any sidewalk, any park, they're going to do it. They don't have to follow what the city is, um, is basically wanting them to do. And what do you think about the length of the, the parade route? and where it is in the city, what part of downtown it's in. It, it's in, it's, it's in, a, it's in the, the worst part of uh, downtown. It's, it's, it's not an attractive area. Um, it's the least developed, and it's, um, it's not really where the protesters are gonna wanna be. Uh, it's not where anyone wants to be, and, and, and the places that we all wanna be, they've given to the RNC. Um, it's, it's pretty silly that they've uh, taken a, a, the, a beautiful outdoor park, and, and they're gonna build a 30,000 square foot ultra nightclub lounge um, for the, the RNC when that's a perfect place for the residents of Tampa to come down, the visitors of, uh, that are coming to speak out um, to celebrate on that park. Uh, they, should, they should put the 30,000 square foot building um, in the public viewing area and give us the park, Curtis Hickson Park. You're listening to WMNF Tampa, the last call program. My guest is Amos Mears. He's with a group called Resist RNC. It's one of the groups that's forming that will be doing protests during the Republican National Convention that's coming here in August. And uh, if you'd like to join the conversation, you can give us a call at 813-239-9663. You can also email us at dj at wmnf.org if you'd like us to read your email on the air. And, uh, you know, um, this will be talked about tomorrow at Tampa City Council. They're going to be voting on a few things that have to do with the Republican National Convention. One of the things is that they're going to be trying to set aside some money to lease the space for part of the public viewing area. Um, first, since, that, since I just used that term that's in the, the city's clean zone ordinance, what do you think about the term public viewing area for, for this area where they're going to allow protesters kind of unfettered access? It's just another name for free speech zone, which is another name for the area that they're, in, you know, it's anti-free speech zone uh, is really what they're doing. The, the, the planet Earth is a free speech zone. The United States boundary is a, is a free speech zone. Uh, they're, they're saying this little area is where we can uh, express ourselves that, that goes, uh, that flies in the face of the Constitution. So it's just, it's just another, it's marketing. One of the things I'd, I'd like to talk to you about is that there are groups different from your group that will that are following kind of all the suggested rules from the city uh, there are some groups that will be have applied and will be applying for permits to march during on this official parade route there's also groups that are, have applied to use certain parks in the city that this that aren't being taken up by the RNC to do their protests of 50 people or more um, is that something that your group is doing and if I, I think it's not I think I have a feeling you haven't um, Done any permit? Uh, applied for any permits? Is that right? And why? Correct. Uh, well, we feel that asking permission for stuff that you know, we already have the right to do um, jeopardizes our rights. Uh, we we're not speaking out against the groups that want to apply for that permit. That's that's their choice, um, and we support them. Uh, but our group specifically is not. And uh, the groups that endorse us, they may or may not apply for the permits. We've we've uh, accommodated them by um, putting the links to the website for uh, City of Tampa. So we've made sure to let everyone know what their process is. So uh, we're not keeping that information from them, and we're, we're, um, we're open to uh, whatever they would like to do. And I'd like to hear from people who are doing that. If you're with one of the groups that's going to be protesting and is applying for a permit, I want to hear how that, that process is going. If you'd like to give us a call at 813-239-9663. If you are protesting, give us a call. Or if you're not protesting, if you are uh, – if you're – leery of having protesters in downtown Tampa and around the, the area, give us a call as well. I want to hear from a range of different people on this. Uh, it would be, be nice to have a very broad discussion about this. 813-239-9663 or dj at wmnf.org. Well, the Republican convention is not just isolated to downtown Tampa. That's where the, the, the nominating convention will be 
that's that's in the Tampa Tampa Bay Times forum. The um, that's also where the journalists will be in the convention center, but the delegates are going to be spread out all over the area. And there's actually one really big event in St. Petersburg on the very first day, or even before it starts. Uh, and and you were mentioning to me before that there are people in St. Petersburg who are getting organized. Tell us about that that effort. Yeah, St. Pete, um, the community there is a little more active, and there's already um, uh, concerned citizens that have formed a coalition, uh, St. Pete RNC Coalition. You can go St. Pete Coalition, uh, St. Pete RNC Coalition org. Um, they're going to develop their mission statement and um, their values and, and put that up soon. Uh, but basically, they're going to um, work with the city. They're going to try to do in St. Pete what uh, what we weren't able to do in Tampa. Uh, they want to work with the city and say and, and find alternative solutions to events like these rather than following the agenda that uh, previous um, cities have, have followed. And that event is the there's going to be a big reception for all the delegates invited delegates and invited media at the Tropicana Field and the city when the when the city mentioned the the official announcement of this event they said they anticipate protests and so you're saying that that's probably going to happen in St. Petersburg. Sure uh, it's it's part of these events and um, uh, one thing that the the, um, the federal government does is is, um, is conditions the towns uh, to to think that these protesters are somehow um, a problem that they, that they're violent. They they use the term violent anarchists. They they throw in the black bloc. Uh, but 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 really, these protesters are coming. A lot of them are are residents of our own towns. Um, but these anarchists, the black bloc, the protesters, the demonstrators, the activists, they're coming to to speak out about issues that that affect us all. They're actually coming here to um, support people in general. They're speaking out to protect the environment. They're trying to end the wars. They're trying to find a fair economy. Uh, the real threat here is the federal government and the power elite that uses the federal government to um, to uh, basically install their nationwide surveillance state. And, and they want the town to reject the protesters to say, no, we're scared of them, and create a state of fear so they can justify new laws. Yeah, I think that a lot of my interaction, uh, either reading about it or actually talking to officials, has, has been kind of this... I hate to use the word fear mongering, but a lot of it is that they that they make it sound like there's this really bad thing that's happening that there's they're going to be these protesters. One major exception to that was during a Tampa City Council meeting a few months ago. Um, one of the Tampa City Council members, and then a couple of, uh, of them agreed with her afterwards. Yvonne Capine said, um, "Why don't we just call everyone who's coming guests?" And I and and that was like one of the very few times that I that I thought that the um, the, the conversation kind of turned from from this boogeyman uh, scare conversation into something that was a little sounded a little bit more realistic. You know, they're welcoming the the, the thousands of conventioneers as guests. They're welcoming the journalists as guests. I you know I, I'm sure that most protesters are are going to behave in a similar ways to the other people who are going to be coming. So that's just a, that was just an interesting take I saw. Why don't we go to the phones? Um, Anthony in Valrico. Hi, Anthony. Amos. Tampa. Thanks so much for that that interesting call, Anthony and Valrico. What's your response? Uh, I'm a little surprised. Uh, I'm not sure what my message is that doesn't align with him. I'm speaking out against uh, our freedom of speech and our right to assemble. Um, if those issues aren't, um, I don't know. I don't. I don't really. I don't know how to respond to that. Uh, uh, if you don't value those those principles, then um, I'm not sure. You know, I'm not sure what to say. Yeah, it sounds like the the U.S. has a long history of people speaking their minds about what they what they think about. Let's go now to Russell in Tampa. Hi, Russell, you're on the air.